So while there are lots and lots of similarity between birdsong and human language, there are also some crucial differences which have been outlined in recent years. So one that comes up a lot is that birdsong seems to lack a flexible semantics, right? So like the bee dance, birdsong is only ever about a few things. A lot of it, for example, mating is a very key topic in birdsong. It's not clear that there's an infinite range of novel meanings. Again, the expressivity, all the different concepts and topics and timing, for example, that we can talk about in human language. It's not clear that birdsong has that. It also seems to lack individual words per se. Like we know it's referential and or we think it's referential, right? Uh, and that the song refers to whatever the topic's about, but it's not clear what part of the song refers to something, a concept, for example. Is it a particular note sequence that's the symbol? Uh, that's a little unclear, right? We're not clear about exactly how it breaks down a lot. Um, moreover, the combinatorial system seems a little less complex than human language. So while human language, again, has these building blocks, you have phonemes, these sounds, that make up syllables, that make up words, that make up phrases, that make up sentences, that make up discourses, and so on. Birdsong seems to stop at the, the word level. You have these notes that make up syllables, that make up motifs, and that's what you get, right? So it seems like you have less of a, of a buildup, less of a hierarchy in birdsong. And so here's one that actually has come under a lot of scrutiny lately. So when Berwick and friends wrote this in 2012, it seems that while birds can reorder elements within their song and produce you know, sequences of infinite length, it doesn't seem to change the meaning of the entire song. So their combinatorial system doesn't connect with meaning in the same way that human syntax does. So a nice example of this in human language, if we say penguins eat fish, there's a certain order to the words penguins and eat and fish, and it means penguins are doing the eating and fish are being eaten, right? It has a certain meaning. And that, importantly, does not mean the same thing as fish eat penguins. Same elements, different order. This means something else entirely, that fish are doing the eating, penguins are being eaten. But a bird song, uh, at least so we thought in 2012, that was made of a motif with an order, say, A, B, C, conveys the very same meaning as a song made of motif order C, B, A, right? You get the change of the elements, right? From penguins eat fish to fish eat penguins, but there doesn't seem to be any equivalent meaning change, and that seems to be a pretty uh, important difference, right, between how combinatorial system works in bird song compared to human language. Except, then there was really started, people started to look at this. So you have the chestnut crowned babbler, this little guy. It uh, turns out that they produced the song that has the, uh, sim, we can refer to it as an AB ordering when flying, and song BAB when feeding chicks, so different context. And the co author Townsend here suggests that this is the first time that the capacity to generate new meaning from rearranging meaningless elements has been shown to exist outside of humans. And that sounds really cool, but um, in this particular case, AB when flying, BAB when feeding chicks, what does each one mean exactly? So, I love to fly, here have some food, if so, why are AB, why is AB appearing in both, right? It's a little unclear, you know, this, is, this could be one interpretation of what's going on, but is it really true that you're really getting a different meaning, really communicating something different by reordering these parts and that a, a, the AB combination, for example, has some inherent meaning to it. Uh, and then there was a, another study that came a little later. So Japanese great tits, this guy right here, very cute. They use ABC calls to mean watch out, which they own because they only do it in the presence of sparrow hawks. It's like an alarm call. And D to mean come over here. And then this is the part where you're like, oh, okay, I now see that there's some kind of like meaning combination happening here. They use ABCD, right? Watch out, come over here to indicate that they should all flock together and be alarmed. Watch out, come over here, let's flock together and be alarmed, right? And notably, if you change the order, if you say D followed by ABC, they don't do this, right? So this has a distinct response. It has, in some sense, a distinct meaning, right? Order matters. A, B, C, D means let's all flock together and be alarmed, and D, A, B, C does not, right? So that seems to be more, um, more like the human syntax system where changing the order of fish eat penguins or penguins eat fish changes the meaning.